Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Foothills, which is a fantastic little game. I mean, for starters, this is basically the spiritual sequel to Snowdonia, which is one of the greatest worker placement games of all time. Love Snowdonia to death. To death! Um, and, well, I should say, it is a great two-player game right out of the box. This one, which is a two-player only game, although the developers are working on specific solo scenarios. You can read about those on Board Game Geek. They sound really cool. They're all based on real history and stuff like that. But anyway, as a two-player only game, the thing I love about this is it really breaks the trend of most two-player only games. The vast majority of them out there are always some kind of dueling game. You know, something where we're on e opposite sides of a battle line, trying to destroy each other's forces in some way or other, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what my wife Jen and I are looking for. We're looking for experiences where we can, um, well, even though we're competing, we can almost collaborate, where we can work to our heart's content on what we're trying to achieve and look for opportunities. That's the type of interaction we like uh, to, you know, spur between each other, and that's what this game is all about. Hey, if you're waiting to build a station and you don't have the means by which you could uh, clear rubble, maybe you're just waiting for me to do it, because you can see I've got my my super powerful clear rubble card. And you know I'm going to do it eventually. And so in the meantime, you'll just do other actions so that you can pounce as soon as that rubble clears out. Um, but uh, you know I might not do that for a while. So do you trigger another action that you don't particularly need to get your strong rubble clearing card back? Um, you know, the, the it is a tight balancing act. It's almost a dance between players here because, you know, as soon as I clear rubble, that means, oh, there's a whole bunch of new track and stations to build. As soon as stations get built, that means there are new worker placement spots we can go to with our surveyor. And every step of the way, if we weren't just focusing on that, there's always having to keep an eye out for all the different cards we could upgrade our starting action cards to and trigger more scoring opportunities for us at the end of the game. We're going to get most of our points during the game with the quick, easy actions or go for the long-term game. And and uh, every step of the way, always having to remember that another event could come along and just wipe out everything. Yeah, nobody. someday somebody will clear out this rubble, and, uh, and then somebody could lay the track or do the station. Unless, of course, an event happens, then boom. We waited too long, and the game will take care of it for us, and the game is one step closer to finishing. So even though it's only a two-player game, it does have a nice level of tension that you would get at higher player counts, where somebody else might come in for a big super move, and um, you know, basically this is a game where you cannot hoard. You can! Actually, I should say, it's interesting, I saw a couple of threads on Board Game Geek. Some people play, complaining that, well, for me and Jen, this was an hour-long game. Maybe even 40 minutes, now that we played it a few times. I've seen other people say, man, as a two-player, this took us over two hours to finish. And it's interesting, because um, one of the main sources that is going to uh, bring about the end of the game is pulling from the stockyard to potentially create more events. And the interesting thing is, as more events happen, they become less likely until all three of these are filled, and then all the events go back in the bag, and then suddenly you can have a big explosion. Also, the more players hoard resources, the more likely events are going to come out of the bag. But events never come out automatically. It's always when players pull stuff from the stockyard. And in a lot of circumstances here, you don't have to pull from the stockyard. A lot of the powers let you pull directly from the bag. So it is possible for players, if they choose to, if they don't look at this as a race, which is really what it is, they, the game can stall and take quite a while because nobody is doing what is necessary to move the game forward. Um, and I mean, I'm, you could say maybe that's the fault of the game because they don't necessarily make it clear to players that a, 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 a less than pleasant outcome can happen if players engage in certain activity. I mean, there's no safety net for it. It's not like there's, hey, if um, you know the game, uh, if, if nobody's gone to the stockyard for quite a while, it's not like the stockyard automatically starts emptying out until where it will automatically trigger events or something like that. So I, I only say that not because I think it's a problem, but it can lead to issues. It can lead to a less than satisfactory experience if players do not always remember that you've got to keep going. You're racing as fast as possible. Because another thing it's very easy to do is just get into the, oh, there's all these cool worker placement spots. I'll just keep you know, moving, moving our workers around and bouncing around from action. And you can just do that till the cows come home. Um, because the thing that ends the game is laying track and um, triggering events. And if you're doing neither of those things, well, 
the game will keep going. And the thing that's easily overlooked is laying track is the fastest, easiest way to score points in this game. Yes, you can do big, complex, elaborate, moving workers around and all kinds of stuff to slowly build up for big in-game scoring stuff, or you could just rush this game, get that track laid, uh, you know, get the best return on investment, and trigger the game that much earlier because you're constantly trying to get more iron out of the stockyard to, or, or stone to build as fast as you can. And so I, again, I don't think that's a problem at all. I do think maybe the developers missed a trick for some kind of implicit built-in timer. If the players aren't doing the job then, that they're supposed to do of triggering events and moving the game forward. And I wonder if maybe they should have done that. I know they're working on an expansion. Maybe they'll introduce something like that, some kind of countdown timer. But for me and Jen, because we play this as a race where we are trying to grab stuff as fast as possible and not just get into little loops of just doing the same thing over and over again to very slowly and inefficiently eke out points. Um, we haven't run into that. I just mentioned this for folks who might check it out. Uh, it's something to be aware of going in. And yeah, maybe that shouldn't be the responsibility of players, or at the very least, maybe the rulebook should have made this clear. I don't know. But that, I think, is really the main complaint one could levy against Foothill. Uh, but that is so overwhelmingly overshadowed by all the goodness. The variability that uh, there's eight tracks every time you're going to get a different combination of six. And I love that all these tracks have very different feels. They all have little quirky idiosyncrasy, you know, idiosyncrasy elements to them, which I'm going to assume is based on the real world history of these tracks. I don't know that for a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised if the developers did their uh, research. And that's why there's all these little special rule breakers for like, there's uh, some tracks have area control, some tracks, um, you know, do uh, majorities and uh, some tracks change the rules for about how you do stations. There's all kinds of variety and you'll get from game to game and then you'll get more game to game variety from the bonus action cards that are available if players do follow that route. Everybody's going to do a few of those at the very least. And um, yeah, it just zips by really quick. Above all else though, the thing that truly makes this game special, and I would love to see this in other games, is this action selection system. One of the coolest ones I've seen since Ulm. The notion of, okay, these are my actions and of course... I should do these actions, but then they get turned into weak cards. And I don't want to do those weak actions. I want to do strong actions. But if I never do the weak action, then I'll never get my strong actions back. So the constant tension of how do you ju literally juggle as these cards are flipping back and forth. And okay, well, if I do this weak action, now is not a bad time to do it because there aren't enough of the resource I want to grab. There's only that one. So I'll do it. I'll get the peak efficiency out of it. Uh, whereas at other times, it'd be very, very wasteful. So I can get my big action back. So I can set up my big, you know, one, two, three combo chain that I'm, I'm building up for over the course of the game as we just race towards the finale. I love this system. I would love to see this idea put into more games. I, you know, I, I think I, you know, it's, it's just delightful. It's so much fun and just is constantly amazing me with all the interesting situations it creates. You know, I mean, you saw a couple, if you watched all the way through the run through where, oh, no, this is not, but I can't do it because I don't have the card. And my opponent knew that. And that's why she was ready to very slowly create that opportunity that she would be able to take care of later because I couldn't do it now. Um, super sharp. Just so much really lovely, fun in this box of Foothills. That is my final thoughts, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.